it is. Marvin Devine. Hoover. Axel. And you know how we do. <laughs> yeah, I got the juice, yeah, I got the juice We game cool, make them look like cool Always play cool, that's the biggest rule Forget what they doing, keep on doing What is up, good people? What is up, good people? Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Two Guys, Six Kidneys. I am one of your two hosts, Jason Nunez, uh, joined along with my co-host, Rich Dames. Rich, how are you, sir? I am great. How about yourself, sir? Doing good, doing good. And before we get started, we want to let everyone know that we have a recent birthday boy in the house. <laughs> so, so, Rich, happy birthday, my friend. I appreciate it, Jason. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yep, 41 yep. years young, feeling like, 41. feeling like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get that. Yeah, 40. Uh, I'm 40, so I'm I'm right behind you. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right behind you. Just kind of another one of those, you know, links. There you go. There's that fun Fetty I was waiting for, Steve. Yeah. There Steve, you go. You <laughs> there it is. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate that. So, yeah, it's uh, another one of those kind of similarities that we have, right? So, similar age, you know, family man, both oh, yeah. from PD. So, yeah, it's. It's, um, our lives are extremely, extremely parallel. It's when, when you, when you step back and look at the, look at the big picture. Oh yeah. M multiple connections, multiple connections. Indeed. Indeed. So also before we get going, just to let y'all know, I'm experimenting with some lighting. So if I look a little odd, uh, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not my kidneys. <laughs> uh, I'm experimenting with some lighting. They, I, I've had them, I uh, just got them recently and, um, just getting them set up here. And of course, minutes before the show, I'm scrambling in the background trying to get them on. So hopefully it's looking okay. Yeah, uh, awesome. Thanks. Appreciate that. So let's go ahead and get started, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We are going to talk about something that's very timely, especially for Rich and I and for a lot of people. Um, we're going to talk about inclement weather because Rich and I and a lot of other kidney warriors in, in Texas experienced that last week oh yeah 
<laughs> we did. Oh, and there's 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 Candy. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, one of our one of our faithful yeah. viewers. Thanks so much for joining us. We always love it when we see your name pop up there. So yes, let's get to our topic, inclement weather. So just to kind of give everyone some context. Rich, what happened last week? Man, <laughs> <laughs> they, they're calling it snowbid. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> it was it was crazy. Uh us in San Antonio, you know, we got some serious snow, got some freezing temperatures. I think one of the days the high was like 19 degrees or something like that. I woke up and I'm from originally from Lorain, Ohio. You see, you know, the Ohio State shirt. But um, it was colder here in San Antonio than it was in Lorain, Ohio. And I was like, man, I did not sign up for this. I left Ohio to get away from cold weather and snow. And it followed me here somehow, some way. And uh, a lot of people had power outages for days. A lot of people had power outages, um, water outages and freezing temperatures that we are definitely not used to out here. So it was a it was a crazy situation. Definitely. Definitely. It was. And so, yeah, just just like you said, we had power outages. We had water outages and we had snow. Uh, we had snow. Thanks. Um, Thanksgiving Eve. But Valentine's Day Eve, you know, snow was dropping from the sky, and we're not used to that in Texas, especially not on Valentine's Day, right? Definitely. So definitely out of the norm for us. You know, our homes, our cities are not built for this type of weather. Um, and just as Rich said, there was power outages. So one of the one of the thoughts that came to mind as I was going to bed, and as power was going out across the city and across other, you know, other other parts of the state there is my my mind and my heart went out to those PD kidney warriors who were plugging into their machine yeah. not knowing if their treatment was going to go to completion cuz power is going out all over the state and man you know you know as one of those moments where that happens throughout the day where i just i thank my donor and i say oh, yeah. thank you god Oh, yeah. You know, it's not a situation I'm in, but there are still many others in that situation. So say a little prayer for them that they may have the perseverance to get through that evening and finish that treatment. Absolutely. Because so, if you don't know, like when you're on PD, we're hooked up to a machine and that machine has to be plugged in. You have to uh, use electricity for it. And when it goes out, you have a certain amount of time that maybe if the power just goes out and come back on, you can continue treatment. But if it goes out for an extended period of time, you have to go through a process to get yourself on a manual cycle and finish your treatment. And it's one of those things where, especially if you, um, you know, I think about people like, you know, Omar, who's, you know, was on working while on PD. And let's say you have to get up and go to work in the morning and you're trying to get sleep that night and you expect to be hooked up to your machine and that machine do the work for you. But now you have to wake up and actually manually do these exchanges. And it's something that, um can definitely ruin a night and ruin several nights and several days because of the extended amount of time that we were without power down here so it's definitely something that i thought about and like you was thankful for my donor and thankful to be um in a situation that i am right now amen to that and that's that's definitely the case um so what do you do in those situations you know if you're on peritoneal dialysis and if your training was anything like mine you know you were literally trained specifically for these moments that yeah. are a possibility it's a good chance they're not going to happen but in case it does they drill it into your training what to do and and even now not having done you know treatment for you know just over a year now my mind went to what would i do and i was like oh duh you know silly just do manuals yeah so that training is still etched in my brain so shout out to angela shout out to laurie shout out to joey who were all my 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 nurses while i was on pd who kept reminding me don't forget to do manuals if the power goes out here's what you do are you doing manuals so that way you still know how to do them so it's fresh in your mind Absolutely. it's um it's 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 a must and there's different pd patients that you know strictly do manuals and there's some like myself who I, I strictly went on the cycler and I, I saved manuals for those one-off situations. Yeah. And that's how it was for me too. I would, um, of course we had to learn how to do the manuals and that's actually what they taught us first because, you know, they know if something happens, um, you definitely have to understand and know how to do it yourself versus depending on a machine to do it. But I was a type that I used the machine and preferred that. I know some people who preferred manuals and would do those actually during the day. 
and would have their nights to actually get rest. But for me, it just worked out better the opposite way. But I don't know about you, Jason, but I have some times when I was on the machine and we lost power. Um, did you ever experience that yourself? Like looking back on your journey, did you ever lose power during your cycle? Looking back on my journey, the times that I had to stop my treatment, it was due to the machine, mm -hmm. uh, due to some kind of malfunction. It did not happen a lot, but I'll be honest with you, within the year and a half that I was on PD, I had to send, I had to send back two machines. So I went through three machines in that year and a half. Oh yeah. I probably went through four or five, honestly. Yeah. yeah it right. was actually my first one that I got, it worked for maybe a week before oh, I was wow. issues with the scale. And it was just a nightmare because every night it was like, I was just praying that this thing would not give me any issues and I can get a good day's rest and sleep through the night. But it would be those alarms going off and you're trying to figure out what's going on. And um, calling the the hotline that they're there 24 seven. I thank God for them. Those people who are on call 24 seven to help you um, navigate some of those issues and troubleshoot the machine. And a lot of times it will come down to something malfunctioning with the machine. But the good thing about it is they were really quick about getting you a new one. You would actually have a new one the very next day. So um, I actually experienced that quite a few times having to replace the machine, but also experience our power going out. We have some um, serious thunder and lightning storms close to our house. And that's what it was for us. We had one of those nights where it was a lot of thunder, a lot of lightning, and we lost power maybe three or four hours during the middle of the night where I had to wake up and um, drain the, the bag that was in me from the, the machine and then start a, a, a manual cycle and continue manuals throughout the day. And that's something, again, I, I don't um, I don't miss one bit. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not not one bit. So essentially, you know, how do we prepare, right? It all starts with our training. Mm -hmm. That's 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 step one. You need to know how to do manual exchanges. And it doesn't matter who you're with, if you're with Fresenius, if you're with Baxter, if you're with DeVita, there is a manual process when you're on PD, to my understanding. You know, well, I was on Fresenius, and I believe you were too, Rich. Mm -hmm. But just from getting to know folks, you know, who go through other companies, there's always some sort of a manual process. Yeah. Uh, for those who may be watching who aren't familiar with, with manual exchanges, it's not using the machine. Um, it's You're essentially doing dialysis manually. It's two bags. One is full of fluid and one is empty. Those bags are connected. Um, you need There's certain steps you take so that way the fluid goes into certain bags. And there's this uh, a third piece. It's called a organizer. And there's a, like a switch almost where you can direct the flow. And uh, it essentially uses uh, gravity. So you, so like if you look behind me right here, where my baby Yoda is and my caps are, yeah, that's yeah. not a code rack. That's an IV. That's an IV stand, right? So that's one of the. All of that. Get this stuff out of here. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I thought about it, but I needed, you know, some kind of a memory, and I'm oh. sentimental like that. So I have the IV stand. I also have the flash drive that has my my uh, prescription to my cycler. So oh, essentially wow. what you do is you hang that bag that's full of fluid on the IV stand. You attach the, the knob with the switch into that organizer. It's, it, it's like a holder and you plug in. There's a port where you can plug into your catheter. Mm -hmm. You break the seal and uh, the solution comes in. I'm probably, I'm probably saying this wrong. I'm forgetting my training now in the exact specifics. That's why it's important to be ready guys. Cause if, if you don't do it, you, you may do the steps wrong. Oh, yeah. So first, first you want to drain. That's right. So first you want to drain, drain the solution that's in you. Uh, so once that bag is full, before you switch to fill, you want to look at the bag. You want to make sure that that fluid is clear. That's a very, that's a very, very important step in this process, mm -hmm. whether you're on the cycler or whether you're doing a manual. When you're on the cycler, there's like a little bubble that you can look at your look at what's being drained to make sure it's clear. If it's foggy, then that's a sign of uh, peritonitis, and you certainly don't want that. Oh no! So one of the one of the tips that I was taught in training was get a magazine or a paper, something that has text on it. Put it underneath the bag. If you can read the text, you're fine. If you can't read the text, you can't see it as blurry then there's cause for concern. So call your on-call nurse, um, especially if it's at odd hours of the night. So once you drain, you know, and the fluid will stop coming, you may feel that pinch, which is known as drain pain. Uh, then you, then you, thing then you yep, 
then you switch. So that way you can fill yourself. And once that bag's empty, then you're done. Then whatever your normal dwell time is, you just leave the fluid in there. And once that time's up, you do another exchange. So very, very important to remember the steps. And that that's like a high level explanation of it. Mm -hmm. um, my nurse gave me a step-by-step -step instruction, front and back paper of what to follow, which helped me a lot, especially when there was a period of time where I didn't do it. Uh, so that that's that's how you prepare. And aside from that, you make sure that you have, you know, a light. So if you do lose power, instead of using a candle, you know, if you have some kind of a, a battery of some sort, uh, worst case scenario, have your spouse, your caregiver, someone else who's in the room with the door closed, also wearing a mask, mm -hmm. also had to wash their hands, maybe <clears throat> hold the flashlight for you so that we can see what you're doing. You definitely don't want to hold the flashlight and then go to, then go to uh, performing the exchange if you don't wash your hands after holding the flashlight. Always want to make sure those hands are clean. Kent, tell the support group we said hello. Thanks. There you go, Kent. Appreciate you. That's right. Thank you so much. Another thing that I didn't really think about until recently when you started talking about the steps, Jason, is um, not being able to warm the bags. That's one of the things that, you know, was very important is warming the bags before you put that solution in, because if not, it, it does cause a lot of pain. And, you know, being in a, a position where you don't have any electricity, any power to warm those IV bags or those fluid bags before they are um, put inside of you. That's another thing that, you know, our, our warriors had to deal with during this, this critical time. And it's, um, it's one of those things that you, you kind of take these little things for granted when it comes to all of the, the benefits of electricity and having power. But when you're on peritoneal dialysis, all of these little things can play a big part in your treatment. Indeed, indeed. Um, and thanks for mentioning that warming, uh, warming the bags, that's something that completely went out of my mind there. So again, another example to be prepared know your steps, know your order. Um, it's almost like manual exchange to me. I think of it as like a backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. The backup quarterback goes to practice every week, right? They take reps. They don't take as many reps as that starter, but they take reps. So that way they're ready. That way they know the game plan. That way they know what the calls are. Same thing with manual exchange. It's it's that backup quarterback that's just ready to go in the game when when that cycle when that cycler either gets a concussion because it malfunctions or something happens and it's out two weeks because of a COVID quarantine, then that, then that sack is ready to go. That, uh, the manual exchange is ready to go. Sorry about that. So yes, very, yeah. very important. And, to, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I had to do some manuals in some, uh, some pretty unique places where I did some, you know, while traveling, going on a long road trips and knowing that you're going to get there later than, um, the regular time that you would hook yourself up. One of the things that I would do is I would kind of do a manual knowing that I might not get my full cycle time at night. And while I'm traveling, actually have the bag on the, <laughs> um, on the little uh, the little grab bar over there with the hanger. I got really creative because I traveled a lot while on per peritoneal dialysis. So another thing in hotel rooms, um, because if I'm flying, I'm not going to be able to bring, you know, all of my racks and everything to actually hook the bags up. But what I learned is, you know, I would hook them up on the closet door with a little hanger or something like that. And I always figured out a way to make it work, even on cruises, you know, doing um, manual exchanges on cruises, because that's one of the things that was a big, um, a big inconvenience, because when you go on a cruise or especially on a cruise, they would send me with enough for the machine, but also enough for a manual exchange for my entire duration, just in case something with the ship happened. Sometimes with the motion of the ship, it would cause the machine to malfunction or, or cause a cold to um, pull up and have that error message and that alarm going off. So I always had to take way more than I needed, but it came in handy for those times that I felt like doing a manual exchange during the day. I could simply sit there and hook it up and do it in the room. Yeah, and that and that's one of those situations where maybe if it's not even inclement weather, like you know, traveling. Oh yeah. Um, we had plans to go on a cruise, but uh, my nephrologist actually told me no, mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you go on a cruise. You know, he said there's too many risks. You know, with a cycler, 
Um, if it if it goes down, you don't bring enough manuals. You know, there's just, there's too much of a risk involved. So I'm not going to let you do that. Oh. Um, but uh, you know, just speaking from other friends, you know, rooms are kind of smaller, so you got to kind of got creative depending on the length of the cruise with those boxes because those are always going to take up space. Oh yeah, I had a balcony, thank God, and I was able to just sit them outside on a balcony, <laughs> and it actually served a dual purpose because the balcony, you know, being in a tropical climate, they would get warm just from sitting out there in the sun. So you didn't have to warm them. So it kind of fit two purposes doing it like that. Definitely. Yeah. The man, you, well, Rich travels in style that I know. <laughs> I've seen some videos of Rich traveling and he travels in style. So <laughs> yeah. And all that is, is just being proactive and being prepared and factoring in your treatment when you make those plans. Oh yeah. So, which is something that as you know, uh, kidney warriors who are on peritoneal dialysis, one thing about PD is it really prepared me. It really taught me how to be proactive, mm -hmm. how to plan, how, how not just to unfortunately be spontaneous with my plans and just go do something. Cause the times I did do that, I paid the price cause I, I didn't properly prepare for my treatment. Oh yeah. So that, that was a lesson that I learned really quickly. Yeah, I had some I had some close calls too traveling. And um I remember I was in uh Florida and um I accidentally forgot to put in my order. And I thought oh, I, because I was traveling multiple locations, you know, I had travel back to back to back and I thought I'd put it in for that location. And when I got there, you know, I normally check into the hotel and check with the front desk and make sure all of my um supplies and everything arrive. And when they checked, they didn't have it. I'm like, man, what in the world is going on? And, you know, calling back to Fresenius and trying to figure out what happened, just figuring out that I never ordered it. But thank God it was a facility there that I was able to um, go to and actually pick up what I needed, do an emergency order and actually get it. So there are some things in place. If you have some of those situations, um, there's a lot of um, dialysis centers and um kidney centers all across the country. So thankfully I was in a location where one was really close and they were able to help me out. Yeah. And that's, that's the good thing is that it's really like, um, a network. I remember, um, when I would travel and I would let, uh, my center know they would always give me the number of the closest center to my hotel just oh, yeah. in case something came up, you know, and one of those times, uh, I forgot my scale, right? So something as little as a scale, mm -hmm. I forgot. Because uh, I uh, at, during my trip that time I did have to do a manual, so uh, I needed that scale so that way I could I could weigh it and I could weigh the drain bag before I drained it um, down the sink. Uh, it's very important to weigh that 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 drain bag keep that for your records. Uh, so you know I forgot that uh, I'd figure I I called but I thought you know what I'm just I'm going to use this the scale that that the hotel has. Um, who knows if that's right or wrong, but that's what I did. So, you know, it worked out. I felt fine. So, you know, it worked. Yeah. So yeah, back to back to inclement weather. You know, we Rich and I cannot stress enough, guys. You know, prepare and have that plan B. Have that caregiver if you you know to have that person to help you, to hold that light for you if it's dark, if it's the middle of the night, even if it's to help you unplug, keep that light on for you. So that way you can keep those hands clean. You're not touching another surface and then going back, going back to your catheter, going back to anything that, that, that you're exposed to that could potentially cause some sort of infection because those infections can happen really, really quickly. Oh, yeah. And it's very important to keep everything clean and um, to make sure that you stay sanitized once you actually, you know, finish washing your hands. That was one of the things I don't know about you, but in training, it was little things that I wouldn't even notice I did. It was like I would wash my hands and then I would touch my shirt. Yeah, touch something, and my uh, my nurse would let me know, like you know, you just contaminated your hands after washing them, and it was little things like that that you have to pick up on really quick during your training phase to make sure you're not doing that because you don't want to get an infection. That's the worst thing you want to get, or the last thing that you want to get. Definitely, definitely. Though those infections can be very scary. Um, thanks be to God, I never. I can honestly say that I don't believe I ever fully had peritonitis, but I firmly believe that I was at the right place at the right time to kind of head it off at, at the path. I, uh, I went out of town and in going out of town, uh, you can go to your center and you can ask to borrow a suitcase for your cycler. Cause that cycler is pretty big. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and they they have, you know, just a, um, a handful of suitcases that they lend out to their patients. So I was I was returning it that morning. I woke up, I got ready, took a shower, felt normal, you know, needing a kidney. But according to the way I was feeling then, I felt okay. And uh, so I made the trip and I noticed that during the drive, I began to feel chills, right? I began to feel chills. I got weak. I I made it to the center and uh, I just kind of sat there in my car before I got down because I was like, man, I feel really tired all of a sudden and I feel cold. And, you know, I felt cold. That was kind of par for the course at that time. But this was like shivering cold, like I was shivering. So uh, I mustered up, you know, the energy to get down the suitcase, very light. It was empty and rolled it into the center, sat in the waiting room. This is all pre-COVID um, and uh, rolled it into the waiting room and waited for my nurse. And she walked out to pick up the, the luggage for me, the suitcase. And she looked at me and she asked me, are you feeling okay? And I told her, no, I, I, I just in, in the drive here, I've gotten extremely tired and um, I, have, I have chills. I have, I'm shaking. She was like, come inside, let me check something. So she did not hesitate. She took me to the back, took me to one of the training rooms, uh, drained the solution that was in me. Uh, she gave me some sort of an injection and um, she filled me with a solution. And then she had me just sit for for a while. I forget how long, but whatever she gave me, it it, it turned me around right away. Wow. Chills, went, chills went away, fatigue went away. Um, honestly, cannot tell you what she gave me. And she, she came back in and she asked, she said, you look better. And I said, I feel a lot better. I don't know what you gave me, but can I take some home? Because it worked really, really good. <laughs> She's oh, like, okay, yeah. you're good. She never told me what was going on, but just uh-huh. kind of th- thinking about it, you know, in the past and even now, um, I really feel like it was the beginnings of that peritonitis. So I was, I was blessed to be at the right place at the right time. Oh, wow. That's, that's scary right there, but it's a good thing you were at the right place at the right time. Um, yeah. When I traveled, they always gave me something with me and I don't remember what the medication was, but it's for just in case you feel um, like you're getting an infection to inject it in your bag and let that um, cycle through to help through that situation. And uh, thankfully, I never had to deal with that. I did have a, a infection on my exit wound, though, and that was nasty. And it was like mm-hmm. at the beginning of um, getting the catheter placed. And the crazy part is actually came from a doctor. And uh, I wasn't wow. paying attention. The doctor came in without washing her hands and touched the site. And um, after the fact, you know, my wife noticed it and was like, and uh, it really did get infected. It got bad, but they gave me something and, and it went away pretty um, pretty quickly. But that let me realize, you know, how bad those infections can get and how quick and a little thing like that, just not paying attention to a doctor, you know, walking in a room and not washing their hands before they, you know, start looking at you and touching you. So that was a, a, a lesson learned the hard way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's those it's, you know, for those that are watching and just kind of taking a look at the comments, Kent, Jonathan, thanks for joining us. Candy, you're on there also. Thanks so much, Jonathan. Thanks for sharing, man. Greatly appreciate it. You're always one to share everything, all things kidney. And, you know, thank you so much for sharing this show as well. So we greatly, greatly appreciate it, my friend. Um, Those infections can happen very, very quickly. And that's why it's important to have that plan B if you're doing an exchange in the dark during some kind of power outage, because it can happen so quickly where you touch another surface that's not clean. And then you go back to, you know, plugging yourself in or trying to trying to clean uh, the, 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 the tip of the catheter that, you know, plugs into the manual tubing or to the cycler. And just like that, just by touching it, if it slips from your grip and it swings and touches the carpet, whatever the case is, very, very important. So always have that plan B so that way you can avoid that because that's where I feel like it can happen extremely, extremely easy. Oh, yeah. Man, so uh, a conversation that my wife and I had, and I, and I kind of feel like this applies to everyone. It applies to patients on PD, but everyone, you know, just to have some sort of a, a inclement weather preparedness kit, if you will, right? So kind of putting that into the perspective of, you know, peritoneal dialysis, what is that? Um, definitely is, you know, some boxes of manual solutions, and I would definitely include the three different uh, percentages of strengths, the three different colors, if you will, uh, the yellow, the green, the red, to make sure that you have some depending on how you're feeling. 
Uh, you definitely want to have a fresh bottle of Alcavase, uh, plenty of gauze, you know, so that way, because one, you may not know how long the power will be out for. Uh, you, you also want to have a, a flashlight or some sort of a clip to attach it to something. So that way, if you are alone, you're not, you're not touching it. Um, water, you know, and just whatever else you use for your treatment, that IV pole and uh, also that clamp for the tubing as well. So you always want to have that clamp handy also. Oh, yeah. And lots of hand sanitizer. <laughs> yes. Hand sanitizer, paper towels, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that's one thing that we had to do, you know, each and every time we have to wash our hands thoroughly. Um, and when I say thoroughly, very thoroughly, but then also use hand sanitizer just to make sure, give you that extra set on that extra step of added protection, because it's that important to keep those areas clean when you're doing your um, exchanges, whether you're hooking yourself up to a machine or doing manuals, you definitely want to keep those hands clean and keep away from everything else while you're doing that process. And one thing that I would do, I know for me, you know, having a family, having kids and everybody running around, I would lock myself in the room by myself, just make sure that nobody's in there coughing or sneezing or anything <laughs> else, anything like that. You know, they say you can have somebody else in there, but just have them wear a mask, mask too. But I was just extra careful and just always would clear out the room while I'm doing my uh, exchanges or hooking myself up to a machine. Indeed. Indeed. Well, taking a look at the clock, Rich, this is normally the part of the show where we ask Steve to hit that VIP entrance music. And we were all ready to do so. Fortunately, this is kind of one of those scenarios that you can encounter when you're doing a live show where things don't go as planned. But hey. It's all good. We had a guest scheduled and lined up uh, a guest who uh, um, our good friend Kent Bressler is working with. If 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 you're watching and you're not sure who uh, Kent Bressler is, and you are a kidney warrior, you definitely want to get in touch with him. He's oh, yeah. a VP, he's a VP of a wonderful nonprofit uh, called Kidney Solutions. They help me out quite a bit, and um, uh, he he really helped me navigate the transplant process. And aside from that. Uh, he, he helped me, you know, he's actually become, um, a mentor to me post transplant. And he's also become a dear, dear friend. Uh, he's had his kidney transplant for more than 30 years now. Wow. And he just recently had his blood work done and his blood work is very, very close to mine. One year out, you know, doing what I can to take care of myself. So he, he's, is a pillar. He's a, a an example of what you want to strive to become as a kidney transplant recipient. So uh, cannot say enough good things about Kent, but, but if you are watching and you're, and you're not, and you haven't gotten in touch with him, please do so. Simply go to kidneysolutions.org. There you go, Steve. Thanks so much for doing that right on cue. Love that. Thank yeah. you so much. So yeah, kidneysolutions.org is the website. His contact information is on there. He also has a podcast called Kent's Kidney Stories, where he interviews kidney warriors, people in the kidney community, um, so definitely check him out. Um, main reason why I, I bring up Kent and I say hello when I mention Kidney Solutions is because I want to give an update on somebody and I'm working behind the scenes to try and get something going here. So, but be, before I do, uh, what I want to say is um, we had on a guest a couple of weeks ago and um, actually a couple shows ago mm -hmm. and the last time we were on oh sorry before before i do that geez okay so the the guest that we were supposed to have on her name is Kala miller right so she is currently on peritoneal dialysis she was scheduled to be on tonight unfortunately technology was not on our side this time uh on her end so connection was dropping there was some latency so uh, unfortunately she's not going to join us tonight we will work to have her on in the future she mm -hmm. really wants to share her story she has an incredible story and i did have a chance to get to get get to know her um a little bit before so uh, i'd like to share just what i do know about her so that way i can kind of help share her story um she's she lives in denison texas she is on peritoneal dialysis with uh, Davida. And uh, what I'll say, yep, thanks, Steve. Her Facebook page is not giving up without a fight. So wow. that's where you can follow her journey. So Kala has aspirations to become the best barrel racer there is. And if you're not sure what barrel racing is, is it involves horses. And you're on a horse and you're riding around barrels. I believe she told me three times 
and back um, around three times and then back to the back to the finish line. This is an event that's in the rodeo. And she told me, I know that I can become the best barrel racer there is. I just need a kidney transplant so I can feel better so I can get back on that horse. She told me she has nine horses in in um, her stable. So, you know, her passion is horses, horseback riding, and uh, this particular event, um, bail racing. So her PD treatment, she told me, is 16 hours. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Wow. Her, you know, Rich, mine was nine and a half hours. Mine was nine and a half too, between nine and a half and 10. So Kala is attached to her cycler more than half the day. Wow. So man, j just when she told me that, I asked her as a, how what, nine hours on the cycler. So she's she she says she's on the cycler, and it's 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 amazing. You know how is the treatment that you know it's she, she, in speaking to her and seeing pictures of her, she she looks she looks fairly young, and um you know the goal she has, I I can hear the passion in her voice that she has for uh for this event that 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 she wants to do and uh it's that that really is what inspired me to you know have her on and reach out to her after speaking to kent he talked to me a little bit about her and he arranged me and her to talk and just talking to her it's like okay you know we definitely need to share your story mm -hmm. um you know god knows why this wasn't you know the time to do it but uh, we certainly will work to have her on in the future awesome. definitely en encourage you all uh to go ahead and join uh, uh, to go ahead and follow her page at not giving up without a fight um, and follow her story. So she does share her story on there as well. So definitely encourage everyone to do that. So next, what I'm going to do, and uh, Nicola, you know, thanks for taking time out of the evening. We'll definitely make sure to to uh, have you on soon. Um, what I'm trying to arrange in the background here is I'm actually trying to get Omar to kind of jump on with us. <laughs> so I'm I'm trying I'm trying to get that going. Uh, Kent, you're right. She does have grit. That's one of the characteristics that I took away from from talking to her. So, so Omar, uh, our buddy Omar Hernandez from El Paso, Texas, who happens to still be in San Antonio right now. And so, you know, talk about living through a storm. Wow. This this man's recovering from a kidney transplant while his family is in a hotel, enduring this same storm as well. So. Um, Patty, if you're watching, I'm trying to send you the link. I tried on my computer. For some reason, it's kind of delaying here, so I'm trying on my phone here. So, um, so yeah. So we we had an opportunity to kind of sit down with Omar and Patty uh, over the weekend just to kind of see how he's doing. Thanks be to God, he has been discharged, and um, he's he's with his family now, and uh, he's he's going through the process, right? Going through the process of recovery, feeling mm -hmm. better with every passing day. So that's definitely a good sign. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a journey. It's a journey. You know, you you have that that time where you know that you're on the list. You have that time where you get the notification that you actually have a donor. You have that time leading up into the transplant. And then, you know, after the transplant, you have that period of healing and recovering and uh, gaining your strength back. And each and every one of them, there are significant times. But, you know, after that transplant, you know, during that healing and recovery process, there are some extra, you know, challenges that go along with it, some extra discomfort and things. But at the same time, you knowing that you're looking forward to that 100% healing, recovering and getting back to your, your normal self. So it's exciting to know that he's on the other side of that, on that, that healing and recovering phase. Indeed. Indeed. One of the first things that I told him when I, when I saw him was welcome to the club, brother, because he's now, he's, he's now a part of that exclusive club, him oh. and Patty and their family. They're all a part of the club, not just Omar, because they Omar. all endured this. So without further ado, Steve, Omar. Steve, play that VIP music for us, please. Oh. There he is. Hey, Omar. What's up, oh, man? man? How's it going? Great about you. Yeah, it's going great, man. I know it is. 
Look at that smile. It was good to be on the other side. I bet oh. it does. <laughs> what? Welcome to it. Bro, you yeah. look good. I'm sorry? I said you look good. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I feel good, man. That's I, awesome, man. That's yeah, awesome. it's, it's, it's a big difference. So now yeah, you, so. you're talking about when, you, when we talk about waking up feeling better already. Yeah, right off, right off of surgery, man. Yeah. I mean, I had a couple, a couple of complications throughout the week, but I mean, I think they landed it with this one, so I, it's, I feel good. Nice, nice. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. To you know, Omar, just to see you, you know, smiling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna encourage wow. you. Like you can see it in his face. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Everyone's been telling me, man, that I got a whole new tone. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't know. <laughs> definitely definitely so i'm going to encourage you to go back to the first show you were on with us yeah <laughs> and you're going to be shocked yeah because because that, that's the feeling i had and just looking at pictures and even listening to my voice yeah pre, pre-transplant so i'm going to encourage you to do that because it's you know as men we're visuals so when yeah. you see that you're gonna you're gonna be even more amazed oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it feels good but it's it's amazing <laughs> awesome awesome so you know talk to us you know talk to us about you know the recovery process how you're feeling there were some complications but you are here now and you know what everyone's recovery is different not every recovery is the same the important yeah. part is that you're not in the hospital uh from my understanding you had an appointment today as well right yeah yeah i went to go draw labs and i actually have another appointment on monday they're gonna give me uh the results and if there's any little tweaking that we need to do with uh, with all the medications, and uh, it'll do it. So, but yeah, throughout the week it was pretty tough, man. Uh, yeah, I stayed there longer than than expected. I mean, maybe about a week, a week and a half, almost in the hospital. Mm-hmm. They were they were having trouble with. Uh, I was producing too much urine, <laughs> and and they didn't know where all this water was coming from, man. So I kind of lost some weight. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, no, they're just playing with all the medications. And then uh, I went in on the 11th. I didn't get out till I think it was the following Friday, Saturday. And uh, they still it still felt kind of kind of off, you know. I mean, I felt good, but not like like if something was missing. I think they were giving me a little bit too much of that hydro hydrochloroside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, when I went back they determined that that i was still kind of dry that i was producing too much urine so they took that one off and as soon as i as soon as, soon as they suspended it um, I, I started feeling good man everything started coming back wow. and uh i was here i am you know <laughs> thanks be to god thanks be to it's god a, it's a whole new me man <laughs> there it is omar 2.0 right yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now it, awesome. it, feels, it feels great man it feels it's, 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 I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it feels like me now. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely feels like me. That's honestly a great way of, of putting it. You know, it feels like me. That's, that's a great way of putting it there. Now, um, is one of those things, you know, you and I talking and me just trying to help in any way that I can, you know, kind of sharing with you. It's first couple of weeks, maybe even a little longer. It's a big experiment. Mm-hmm. Transplant Center is trying to find that right combination of medication to yeah, get you yeah. right. And it's just that in between time where there's complications, kind of like as Kent tells me, those are just bumps in the road. You yeah. know, you're going to get through them, stay in your lane, just go through these bumps and you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, you know, Kent will give me a hard time if I want to ask you because he's already put it there in the comments. Yeah. But how's that walking program going, man? Oh, man. Yeah, I've been walking a whole lot more. <laughs> so. <laughs> So like when as soon as I got out, it, it was kind of tough, man. And I, and I think it was because of that because I was dehi- I was like super dehydrated. Mm-hmm. So it was it was kind of hard, you know, walking around here, and uh, I would get real agitated. Uh, even just to go to a restroom, you know, I would feel like tired. Mm-hmm. And you know, I got released. I got released Friday. So uh, Friday Friday when I got released, I felt normal, like okay. And then come Saturday and Sunday, I started feeling like I'm real tired. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I went ahead and I, I was, I didn't call anyone. I just wanted to see if maybe my body was just adjusting to all the change. And uh, 
so first thing Monday, you know, when I went into go draw labs and, you know, to talk to Dr. Patel and all that, he, I let him know what was going on and he's the one that removed that hydrochlorous and uh, he determined that I was super dry. So they gave me two IV bags and, and, and I just, it just, everything went up from there. Started feeling good. And my wife uh, was rolling me around with a wheelchair all through a uh, <laughs> university transplant, man. And it was crazy, you know? So in the morning, in the morning, you know, she, she was the one, you know, pushing me around and everything. And, and then as soon as he gave me those, 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 those fluids and, and I didn't take the hydrochloride anymore. I, I pretty much started, I could have walked all the way out, you know? Nice. Uh, yeah. It just, it, it just changed, man. Like I was like, wow, like it, it felt good. And then from that point, I just, you know, I've been walking more ever since, you know, I just, going up the stairs here in the hotel and, and you know just to just to walk try uh, and walk more now mm -hmm. kind of challenging yourself now to do a little bit more a little bit more as you, you yeah know, coming back you kind of test yourself right yeah you know it reminded me of you rich because you know how you said that oh you, you feel like you could you know you could do more than what you what you you know what you feel like you feel like you could do more now absolutely but now i will catch myself you know i'm gonna tone it down i just you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> don't get to it <laughs> Don't want to get, much don't get that was backwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was all like, you know what? I better slow my wife told me, you know, a couple of times that you gotta slow down. You know, uh -huh. So yeah. <laughs> Give it time to fully recover. But yeah, it's exciting because you you feel so much better. You're like, man, I want to get out there and, and you know, walk a little bit further and do a little bit more. And yeah. You know, yeah. It's it's one of those things where you have to be thankful for that that energy and that extra energy, but at the same time, kind of take it easy and take it step by step. Yeah. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And what I'll say, Omar. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah. What, what I'll say as well, Omar, is have that same mindset when you get back on that bike. Because, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you're good. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Omar? Oh, uh -oh. So can you hear us? Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. So um, what I was saying, Omar, is keep that same mindset once you get back on your oh, bike. It's cutting off. Oh man, <laughs> this this is the important part. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I can hear you. Now. Sorry. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So what I was saying is have that same mindset uh, once you get back on your bike, because once you get back on that bike, you're gonna want to just ride and ride and ride. So always, always have that mindset as you're going through that recovery process. And that really goes for everyone out there. Uh, we got some folks commenting here. Charlie, that's amazing, my friend. Thank you so much for watching. And we are so happy for you, Charlie. Truly a walking miracle. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much for watching and commenting and sharing your story. All these stories, Rich's story, Omar's story, your story. No, so are you? everyone's stories here it it just shares hope and that's why we try to incorporate this in our show that's geared towards pd patients this is what's waiting for you on the other side so we definitely try and help share that message of hope so that way we can help you get to that part as well absolutely. isn't that right rich absolutely it's exciting because this is coming from a place where we all been there been you know been uh hooked up to that machine and going through the daily process day in and day out but you know that there's other people that have been where you are at and they came out on the other side of a transplant successfully. And then you have somebody that you actually, we got to see, you know, pretty much Omar go through the whole process. Yep. You know, we had him before, had him when he got the donor. And now is after the successful transplant is just showing people, hey, there is hope out there. We got to go out there, get the word out, continue to educate people, continue to encourage people to get tested, to see if you can donate because that's one of the best gifts that you can ever give somebody. You just don't understand how grateful and thankful we are that somebody was, um, you know, mindful enough to say, hey, I can help and step up and do that. So, yeah, it's exciting to see Omar on the other side of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it feels good, man. Real oh, you put that big real, smile, real good, too. You know, and... Yeah, trust me. I know. Like, I can't stop smiling. Like, no matter what happens, like, people – 
you know, can say, you know, all of this stuff about 2020, 2021, all these crazy things, no matter what happens, like we have so much to smile about, so much to be thankful for. And that's like my attitude each and every day, no matter what happens, you're going to see me smiling. You're going to see me thankful just to be alive and be here today, be able to deal with these little problems that we have compared to some of the big problems that we had before. Yeah, yeah, that's when you realize like how small all the other, all, all the other little things. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, oh uh, yeah. And you know you, you appreciate everything a little more. So, but uh, especially health. So. <laughs> oh yeah. You no, know, not, not having to hook up, you know, at night. You know, that's that's just wow. How did it bad. feel like for me? It felt like you know I was on a leash all night, and yeah. uh, it took me a while to realize like at night I can leave my bedroom. Like yeah. for a while, it was like it was crazy for me because I still, once I went and got prepared to go to sleep, I would not leave my room until one day I realized, yo, you can walk to the kitchen and get a snack. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little things. Yeah. So, and so then just oh uh, the urge, man, to want to eat, man, it's crazy. Oh it's, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't know about you guys, did you lose your appetite being on PD? I know for me, I a lot of times I wouldn't have an appetite. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. Yep. Same. same, man. Now my and I've been bugging my wife. She she gets mad at me. She's like, "Hey, you get you lost all this weight, man. That's why you're all you're all you know you're feeling good and you want to eat, you know." Because yeah. <laughs> and then uh, she's all like, "But now now with me, uh, she's all like, now you, I'm gonna start putting up weight though." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because that's that's one thing about it. Afterwards, uh, for me, that appetite came right back. Yeah, yep. it's crazy, man. Like. Yeah. The, the, I don't know. The other day, you know, I took a nap and then I woke up like maybe like at one. I'm like, damn, man, I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, I had to snack on something and oh yeah yeah it's crazy man it's, it's, a, it's a good feeling though yes good sir feeling. Yeah. good good feeling <laughs> good good feeling so so omar uh since you received a direct donation you know your donor um could, could you give us an update uh on her you know how's she doing is she back home just uh share with us something please Can, can you hear Jason? The voice, can you, can you hear him? Uh-oh, okay. So, you. can oh. you hear us, Omar? <laughs> I can't hear Jason. Oh, no, you can't hear me? Can you hear me, can you hear me? No. Oh, wow. oh, no. Okay. I can hear Rich, but I can't hear, I can't hear Jason. All right, That's so insane. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, ask the question since you can hear me. You can hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, so he was talking about you being able to get a direct donation um, you know your donor. You know, give us an update. How's your donor doing? How's her health? She's doing good. Uh, you know, she's she's been you know calling, you know, messaging back and forth with my wife, you know, and and with us, and you know, telling and asking us how we're doing. And but yeah, she's feeling great. You know, first you know the first week was kind of tough for her. You know, mm. my wife my wife was saying that she was here walk walk up and down here. So and then yeah, before she left, uh, she looked good. You know, I, I didn't get to see her unfortunately, but but you know, I was constantly texting Patty, you know, and or talking to her and let her, you know, ask her to see how she was doing. But she, she said she was doing great. And when she walked out to go back to El Paso, that she looked even better. That's but, awesome. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she's, you know, thank her, man. God bless her, you know. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. And that's one of the things that I know my, um, my donor experience, um, he actually became healthier after he donated a kidney. You know, he lost weight. He started walking more because that was part of his healing process. And, you know, just doing those little things, lost weight and got in better shape and was just more mindful about his own health, just seeing what he was able to help me overcome. So that's one of the things that, you know, there's blessings on both sides of it from the recipient and the donor side. Yeah. Hey, Miss yeah. Kathy, I see you over there. Kathy's one of our guests that we had on here and um, definitely looking forward to bringing her back after her transplant as well. Come to the other side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she could join us. <laughs> yeah. Man, so awesome. So awesome. It's good. Well, you know, our our plan was to have on one kidney warrior and we had on another one. You know, the, the news had to be shared. That doesn't mean that Kala story will not be told because it certainly will be shared uh, at some point in the future. Uh, but, um, you know, thankfully we were able to get um, um, Omar on. And I'm not sure if you can hear me, Omar, but thanks so much for being available spur of the moment and jumping on with us. 
Omar, if you couldn't hear him, he was just saying thank you for joining us and we appreciate you. <laughs> I'm sorry, know. man. <laughs> and that's that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what's going on, but we're super excited for you, man. And we're, we're grateful and thankful that you're on the Thank other you. side. And, you know, that's that's the blessing. And you see Miss Kathy on there. You know, she's still waiting up for her miracle and we're still praying and yeah. believe that it's going to happen. You know, there is there is that miracle out there for you. I have no doubt about it. And it's going to happen. And we're excited to have, be able to bring you back on as you're um, on the other side of your journey. Thank you, guys. man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Jason. So it's that time, brother. It is that time. It is that time. So what does Jason do when it's that time? He takes off the glasses. I take off my glasses because what <laughs> happens? I cry. Tears. Every time I pray, I <laughs> cry. But you know what? Those tears are those tears are blessings. Oh, so, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Indeed, we are. So we definitely want to thank Omar for joining us. I'm kind of taking it personal that he couldn't hear me. I just think he didn't. I, I, I just kind of think he's giving me a hard time. So once we're done, <laughs> I'm going to call him and see what's going on. So <laughs> hey, we don't play that, Omar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let's. OK. So, yeah, let's go ahead and just kind of slow it down here. Enter a prayerful mind state so that way we can end this properly. Right. Absolutely. So, OK. So here we go. Um, Rich, um, I guess uh, who, who, who kicks it off this time? You're normally in charge of keeping track of this kind of stuff. Yeah, here. I'll get the prayer because you, you opened up the show. That's right. That's the system. That's the system. Definitely. Before you do, Candy, thanks again for 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 watching. Appreciate it. Uh, oh, I'm not sure who, who who Candy's talking to, but she's saying if you're listed in Pittsburgh, I may have a donor for you. Or are you talking to to Miss Kathy or? So we'll make sure you guys get connected, Kathy, yeah. in Ohio, and um, that's not far from Pittsburgh. So um, we might be able to make something happen. So we'll definitely make sure you guys get connected. Wouldn't that be something if it's one of those stories like Cleveland, yeah. Cleveland Brown fan and Pittsburgh Steeler <laughs> fan and, you know, just a rival was to donate and hey, there you go. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Every every single kidney story that I've um, come across to experience has been an amazing story. And it just shows how God works in mysterious ways and plants those seeds and puts people at the right time with the right people. So um, I have no doubt about it that it might be one of those stories. Yeah. Yeah. We will, we'll wait and see, and we'll go ahead and we'll go and keep track here. But um, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get your prayer, Rich. Absolutely. Most righteous and heavenly father, Lord, we come before you today. Thank you and praising you for blessing us to see another day. We thank you for um, this show that we are getting out the word and helping to um, help people understand that there's life after dialysis, especially PD dialysis, Lord. And we just pray right now that you will continue to provide, Lord God. We lift up Miss Kathy to you right now in the name of Jesus. We just thank you in advance for her miracle. We thank you in advance for her donor that we know is out there. And we just pray that it comes and it comes soon, Lord God. And we're thankful for Omar, his successful surgery. We're thankful for everything that you're doing to him and his family's life. We're thank you for the, the color that we see in his skin, for the smile on his face, for the joy in his heart, for the energy that we can see. And we're just thankful that his donor is doing well and she's healthy. And we're just grateful for this platform that you have blessed us with. And we ask that you will touch each and every family under the sound of our voice. And we just pray that you will continue to show us your grace, your mercy, your love and your kindness, because we know that all of these good gifts come from you. And we're grateful and we're thankful and we'll continuously give you glory, honor and praise. And it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 All righty. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise your good and holy name and we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this gift of faith you have left for us. For this gift of faith helps bring us joy in the good times and it helps carry us through the toughest of times. Heavenly Father, everyone watching has gone through tough times and are going through tough times. Last week, Texas went through some very tough times and some kidney warriors went through some times where they did not know how they were going to have their treatment done. So we thank you for the perseverance that the, the Grace of Texas was blessed with. And we thank you for the perseverance you, you bless kidney warriors with across the world. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the life that we see in Omar's face. We thank you for the life that's been brought to his family, to his wife, to his children, through the donor. So we ask you to please bless Yudi, his donor as well. We ask for blessings upon Miss Kathy, 
for Kala and for all other who are in need of kidney transplants and those who are considering, who are discerning, who are thinking, who are researching to become a living donor. We ask you to open up their hearts, open up their minds and ask them to say yes. Give them the strength to say yes, to make that life-saving decision for somebody in need. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All righty, you see? Tears, blessings right there. Those aren't fake, y'all. I don't force these. They just come. There's that fun fetty to lighten up the mood. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it very much. Everyone, thanks for watching. Everyone, thanks for commenting. We'll yeah. see you next time. God bless. Oh, 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 oh,